Talks with Shri Ramana Maharishi, Volume 3 is being continued. Talk 500, when all the thoughts are banished and the mind is still or enters into a state of nothingness or emptiness, what is the nature of effort needed on the part of the seeker to have a pratyaksha bhava of the sort? That is, example, seeing a mango as a mango. Maharishi, who sees nothingness or emptiness? What is Pratyaksha. Do you call perception of mango Pratyaksha? It involves the play of karma, karta and karya, action, doer and deed. So it is relative and not absolute. Because you see a thing, now you say there is nothing afterwards. That is when you no longer see it. Both are functions of the mind. What lies behind both these assertions is Pratyaksha. There is Indriya Pratyaksha, directly perceived by senses, Manasa Pratyaksha, directly perceived by the mind and Sakshat Pratyaksha, realized as the very being. The last alone is true. The others are relative and untrue. Disciple, if no effort is needed, can the perpetuated state of emptiness of mind be called the state of realization? Maharishi, effort is needed so long as there is mind, the state of emptiness has been the bone of contention in all philosophies. Disciple, is there anything like Pratyaksha Bhava in the state of realization or is realization merely felt or experienced as the very being or sthiti of the soul? Maharishi, Pratyaksha is a very being and it is not feeling etc. Disciple, until the seeker realizes that he is the sort, the above questions arise for him. Maharishi, true. See if you are the seeker. The self is often mistaken for the knower. Is there not the self in deep sleep? Therefore, the self is beyond knower and known. These doubts are in the realm of mind. To speak from this point of view, the advice is to keep the mind clear. And when rajas and tamas are wiped out, then the sattva mind alone exists. So the I vanishes in the sattva. These doubts are in the realm of mind. To speak from this point of view, the advice is to keep the mind clear. And when rajas and tamas are wiped out, then the sattva mind alone exists. So the I vanishes in the sattva. Jnana Chakshus does not mean that it is an organ of perception like the other sense organs. Jnana Meva Chakshuha, Chakshushu, television, etc. are not functions of Jnana Chakshus. So long as there is a subject and also an object, it is only relative knowledge. Jnana lies beyond relative knowledge. It is absolute. The self is the source of subject and object. Now, ignorance prevailing, the subject is taken to be the source. The subject is the knower and forms one of the triads whose components cannot exist independent of one another. So, the subject or the knower cannot be the ultimate reality. Reality lies beyond subject and object. When realized, there will be no room for doubt. The heart knot is snapped doubts are set at rest that is called pratyaksha and not what you are thinking of avidya nasa is alone self-realization self-realization is only aupacharika self-realization is only a euphemism of for elimination of ignorance talk 501 uh, eng mysorean asked disciple how did i get this body maharishi you speak of I and the body. There is a relationship between the two. You are not therefore the body. The question does not occur to the body because it is inert. There is an occasion when you are not aware of the body, namely in deep sleep. The question does not arise then. Nevertheless, you are there in sleep. To whom does the question arise now? The ego. The disciple, uh, the boy said the ego. Maharishi, yes. The body and the ego rise up together and sink together. There is an occasion when you are not associated with the ego in deep sleep. Now you are associated with the ego. Of these two states, which is your real state? 
you are present in sleep and the same you is present now too why should the doubt arise now and not then you are right in saying that it is for the ego you are not the ego the ego is intermediate between the self and the body you are the self find out the origin of the ego and see if the doubt persists shri bhagwan added after a few minutes the answer according to shastras will be that the body is due to karma the question will be how did karma arise we must say from a previous body and so on without end the direct method of attack is not to depend on invisible hypothesis but to ask whose karma is it or whose body hence the answered hence i answered in this manner this is more purposeful talk 502 sergeant rajendra prasad and sergeant jamnalal bajaj with others are on a visit to shri maharishi 16th august sergeant jb asked questions mahar disciple how is the mind to be steadily kept right maharishi all living beings are aware of their surroundings and therefore intellect must be surmised in all of them at the same time there is a difference between the intellect of a man and that of other animals because man not only sees the world as it is and acts accordingly but also seeks fulfillment of desires and is not satisfied with the existing state of affairs in this in his attempt to fulfill his desires he extends his vision far and wide and yet he turns away dissatisfied he now begins to think and reason the desire for permanency of happiness and of peak and of peace bespeaks such permanency in his own nature therefore he seeks to find and regain his own nature that is his self that found all is found such inward seeking is the path to be gained by man's intellect the intellect itself realizes after continuing practice that it is enabled by some higher power to function it cannot itself reach the power so it ceases to function after a certain stage when it thus ceases to function the supreme power is still left there all alone that is realization that is the finality that is the goal it is thus plain that the purpose of the intellect is to realize its own dependence upon the higher power and its inability to reach the same so it must annihilate itself before the goal is reached disciple a sloka is quoted which means i do not desire kingdoms etc only let me serve the forever and there lies my highest pleasure is that right maharishi yes there is room for karma desire so long as there is an object apart from the subject duality there can be no desire if there is no object the state of no desire is moksha there is no duality in sleep and also no desire whereas there is duality in the waking state and desire also is there because of duality a desire arises for the acquisition of the object that is the outgoing mind which is the basis of duality and of desire if one knows that bliss is none other than the self the mind becomes inwardly turned if the self is gained all the desires are fulfilled that is the apta kama atma kama akamascha akamascha full that means fulfillment of desire of the brihadaranyaka upanishad that is moksha here jb tried to make himself clear by saying that what he meant by sad buddhi was not the same as buddhi it means that which holds fast to the good the right and the chosen path he wanted to know how such steadfastness could be gained maharishi wanted what is wanted for gaining the highest goal is loss of individuality the intellect is coextensive with individuality loss of individuality can only loss of individuality can only be after the disappearance of buddhi good or bad the question therefore does not arise disciple but yet one must know the right thing 
चूज द राइट पाथ प्रैक्टिस द राइट धर्मा एंड होल्ड फास्ट टू इट अदरवाइज ही इज़ लॉस्ट महर्षि ट्रू स्ट्रेंथ एक्रूज बाई कीपिंग इन द राइट डायरेक्शन विथआउट स्वर्विंग फ्रॉम इट डिसाइपल डिफिकल्टीज आर मेट विथ हव इज वन टू गेट द स्ट्रेंथ नेसेसरी टू ओवरकम द ऑब्स्टिकल्स विच बिसेट वंस पाथ महर्षि बाय मीन्स ऑफ डिवोशन एंड कंपनी ऑफ द सेजेस डिसाइपल लॉस ऑफ इंडिविजुअलिटी वॉज जस्ट बिफोर मैंशन एज ए प्री रिक्विजिट टू मोक्षा नाउ डिवोशन एंड एसोसिएशन विद द वाइज आर एडवाइज एज द मेथड इज देर नॉट इंडिविजुअलिटी इम्प्लाइड इन दैम लाइक आई एम ए भक्ता आई एम ए सत्संगी महर्षि द मेथड इज पॉइंटेड आउट टू द सीकर द सीकर हैज सर्टनली नॉट लॉस्ट हिज इंडिविजुअलिटी सो फार अदरवाइज द क्वेश्चन वुड नॉट हैव एराइजन द वे इज शोन टू इफेक्ट द लॉस ऑफ इंडिविजुअलिटी ऑफ द सीकर इट इज दस अप्रोप्रिएट डिसाइपल इज द डिजायर फॉर स्वराज राइट महर्षि सच डिजायर नो डाउट बिगिनस विथ सेल्फ इंटरेस्ट येट practical work for the goal gradually widens the outlook so that the individual becomes merged in the country such merging of the individuality is desirable and the related karma is nishkama unselfish disciple is swaraj if swaraj is gained after a long struggle and terrible sacrifices he is not the person justified in being pleased with the result and elated by it maharishi he must have in the course of his work surrendered himself to the higher power whose might must be kept in mind and never lost sight of how then can he be elated he should not even care for the result of his actions then alone the karma becomes unselfish disciple how can unerring rectitude be ensured for the worker maharishi if he has surrendered himself to god or to guru the power to which he had surrendered will take him on the right course the worker need no longer concern himself about the rectitude or otherwise of the course the doubt will arise only if he fails to obey the master in all details disciple is there not any power on earth which can bestow grace on its devotees so that they may grow strong to work for the country and gain swaraj Sri Maharishi remained silent this he later said signified that such was the case disciple is not the tapasya of the ancient mahatmas of the land available for the benefit of its present day inheritors maharishi it is but the fact must not be overlooked that no one can claim to be the sole benefit beneficiary the benefits are shared by all alike after a pause is it without such saying grace that the present awakening has come into being here shri bhagwan said that before his arrival in tiruvannamalai in 1896 there was not any clear political thought in india only dada bhai navroji has become an mp after a short pause jb said shri rajendra prasad is such a noble and selfless worker for the country that he has sacrificed a very lucrative career for his work for this work the country needs him and yet he is not in good health and is always weak and ailing why should there be such cruelty to such a noble man noble son of the country sri maharishi simply smiled a yes, benign smile talk 509 an american gentleman mr j m lorry has been staying in the ashram for about 2 months He asked, "I am leaving tonight. It gives me pain to tear myself away from this place, but I must go to America. I ask for a message from the master. The master understands me even better than I do myself. So I pray for a message to keep me up when I am away from the master, Mas Maharishi. The master is not outside you as you seem to imagine. He is within. He is in fact the self. Recognize this truth." seek within you and find him there then you will have constant communion with him the message is always there it is never silent it can never forsake you nor can you ever move away from the master your mind is outgoing because of that tendency it sees objects as being outside and the master among them but the truth is different the master is the self turn the mind within and you will find the 
objects within you will also realize that it is the master who is your very self and there is nothing but him because you identify yourself with the body you have accepted objects as being outside you but are you the body you are not you are the self there are all the objects and the whole universe nothing can escape the self how then can you move away from the master who is your very self suppose your body moves from place to place does it ever move away from yourself similarly you can never be without the master mr lorry was struck by the answer although he was already familiar with the master's ways he was even visibly moved he prayed that the grace of the maharishi might abide with him shri bhagwan said the master being the self grace is inseparable from the self mr l saluted shri maharishi with intense fervor saying that he is that he might be enabled to realize the truth maharishi is there any moment when you have not realized the self can you ever be part from the self you are always that disciple you are the great master shedding joy and bliss on the world your love is indeed unlimited that you choose to abide in the world in human shape but i wish to know if one should necessarily realize one's self before being of help to the country and a leader of men maharishi realize the self first and the rest will follow disciple america is now the foremost country in industrial matters mechanical engineering scientific advance and other worldly affairs will she come up to the same level in spiritual life also maharishi certainly she is bound to disciple thank you that it will be so i am a partner in an engineering firm but it is not of vital concern to me i try to bring spiritual ideals into the work day life of the firm maharishi that is good if you surrender yourself to the higher power all is well that power sees your affairs through only so long as you think that you are the worker you are obliged to reap the fruits of your actions if on the other hand you surrender yourself and recognize your individual self as only a tool of the higher power that power will take over your affairs along with the fruits of actions you are no longer affected by them and work goes on unhampered whether you recognize the self or not the scheme of things does not alter only there is a change of outlook why should you bear your load on the head when you are traveling on a train it carries you and your load whether the load is on your head or on the floor or the train you are not lessened you are not lessening the burden of the train by keeping it on your head but only straining yourself unnecessarily similar is the sense of doership in the world by the individuals disciple i have been interesting myself in metaphysics for over 20 years but i have not gained any novel experience as so many others claim to do i have no powers of clairvoyance clair audience etc i feel myself locked up in this body and nothing more maharishi it is right reality is only one and that is the self all the rest are mere phenomena in it of it and by it the seer the objects and the sight all are the self only can anyone see or hear leaving the self aside what difference does it make to see or hear anyone in close proximity or other enormous distance the organs of sight and hearing are needed in both cases so also the mind is required none of them can be dispensed with in either case there is dependence one way or another why then should there be a glamour about clairvoyance or clair audience moreover what is acquired will also be lost in due course they can never be permanent the only permanent thing is reality and that is the self you say i am i am going i am speaking i am working etc hyphenate i am in all of them thus i am that is the abiding and fundamental reality this truth was taught by god to moses i am that i am be still and note that i am god so i am is god 
you know that you are you cannot deny your existence at any moment of time for you must be there in order to deny it this pure existence is understood by stilling your mind the mind is the outgoing faculty of the individual if that is turned within it becomes still in course of time and that i am alone prevails i am is the whole truth disciple i appreciate the whole answer maharishi who is there to appreciate what a question from heart shri bhagwan said leave alone the idea of right and left they pertain to the body the heart is the self realize it and then you will see for yourself mr lori thanked shri bhagwan and saluted him before retiring talk 504 a visitor asked shri bhagwan about the over mind and super mind the psychic and the divine of shri arabindo's terminology maharishi realize the self or the divine all these differences will disappear talk 505 Babu Rajendra Prasad said I have come here with Mahatma Gandhi ji's permission and I must return to him soon can shri bhagwan give me any message for him maharishi adhyatma shakti is working within him and leading him on that is enough what more is necessary talk 506 explaining the opening stanza of sad vidya shri bhagwan said sad being is chit knowledge absolute also chit is sad what is is only one otherwise the knowledge of the world and of one's own being will be impossible it denotes both being and knowledge however both of them are one and the same on the other hand be it sat only and not chit also such sat will only be insentient in order to know it another chit will be needed such chit being other than sat cannot be but it must be now taking chit to be sat since sat is jada chit alone becomes jada which is absurd again to know it another chit is required which is also absurd therefore sat and chit are only one and the same 507 an arya samajist from bangalore with a companion visited shri maharishi he asked what is the use of yoga practice it is for personal use or universal benefit maharishi yoga means union of two entities what are they enquire use or benefit if in relation to some center what is it enquire disciple should there be distinction of castes maharishi who is it that sees such distinctions find it out disciple i find that it is observed in this ashram probably without the approval of shri bhagwan others observe it here maharishi who are you that speak of others etc did you notice others that is in your sushupti disciple i am the individuality here i may not see others in my sleep but i see them now maharishi no doubt you do but the one who sees now and the one who did not see in sleep are you are you only the same individual why should you notice differences now and be troubled be as you were in the sleep disciple that cannot be i see it now whereas i do not see it in my sleep that does not alter the existing state of affairs maharishi do the objects exist in the absence of the subject disciple their existence is independent of the subject maharishi do you say that they exist or do they come and announce their existence to you disciple i know that they exist maharishi so it is your knowledge of them only their existence is also absolute disciple even if i do not know they will continue to exist maharishi do you claim their existence in the absence of your knowledge of them disciple brahman is equal to all there cannot be any distinction there caste in this caste distinction is against the highest principle maharishi why do you drag in brahman he has no grievances let him who has grievances pursue the matter disciple you are a mahatma you cannot admit castes but how do the people here enforce such distinctions maharishi did i tell you that i am a gnani or a mahatma you are saying it yourself nor did i make a grievance of this caste affair 
disciple paramatma is the same in all maharishi why do you bring in all these names they can take care of themselves they do not require your help disciple mahatma gandhi also admits equality Maha- maharishi gandhi is not here disciple arabindo does not approve of castes do you approve of them maharishi as for arabindo you ask him as for my opinion how does it matter to you how will it be of use to you have you got any opinion on the matter then alone will affect you that alone will affect you not the opinion of others disciple i do not approve of the caste system maharishi's opinion is valuable as a guidance i want your blessings in my attempts maharishi mahatma has told you to seek and find yourself you will not do it but require his blessings disciple i am trying to follow the instructions but caste distinction is painful it must go maharishi who to whom does it cause pain A disciple the members of the society maharishi it is you who say it there are countries where there are no such distinctions of caste are they free from trouble there are wars etc why do you not remedy the evil there disciple there are troubles here also maharishi differences are always there there are not only human beings but also animals plants etc the state of affairs cannot be helped disciple we do not mind the animals etc at present maharishi why not if they can speak they would claim equality with you and dispute your claims no less vigorously than human beings disciple but we cannot help it it's god's work maharishi if that is god's work then the other part in is your work is that so disciple it is man made distinction maharishi you need not notice these distinctions there is diversity in the world a unity runs through the diversity the self is the same in all there is no difference in spirit all the differences are external and superficial you find out the unity and be happy the pain of diversity is overcome by the joy of the perception of unity moreover a king may disguise himself as a servant that makes no difference in the person disciple i do not object to differences but the claims of superiority are wrong maharishi there are differences in the limbs of one's body when the hand touches the foot the hand is not defiled each limb performs its function why do you object to differences disciple the people feel the injustice of caste distinction it must be rooted out maharishi you can individually arrive at the state where such distinctions are not perceived and be happy how can you hope to reform the world even if you try you cannot succeed kavyakantha ganapati shastri offered to initiate harijans with mantras and make brahmins of them but the harijans did not come forward to accept the offer that shows they are themselves afflicted by an inferiority complex remove that complex first before you try to reform others moreover why do you go to places where such distinctions are observed and cause pain to yourself why should you not seek places where they are not observed and be happy there gandhi ji also tries to bring about equality he is also up against the barrier of inferiority complex afflicting the lower orders he cannot enforce his views on others he observes non violence so matters stand as they are we must disciple we must work to obliterate caste distinctions maharishi then do it if you have succeeded in the world then see if the distinctions persist in this place disciple this must be the first place where i want to effect the reform maharishi why do you exert yourself so much to effect reforms go to sleep and see if there are differences there you obliterate differences without any effort effort talk 508 an indian ics officer was in the hall for a few hours he asked can ahimsa put an end to wars in the world shri bhagwan did not answer and it was time to go out for the evening walk the next day when someone else repeated the question shri bhagwan said that the question contained its answer It is patent that in a state of perfect ahimsa there can be no war to be continued om namah shivaya